Uh, hello, this is Seymour Rocks reporting from Down Under. Um, I received what I considered to be a, uh, a very rude comment to one of my videos, um, which is this. Uh, so first, people like you and Hal Turner said this was killing millions. Then you offer no retraction, and then you completely change your story. Oh, but something, something liberals. Well, that's pretty dumb. Um, I'm certainly not going to uh, recant, but it has led me to go over some of the material of the last three months and to work out just how things have evolved during that time. Um, it's not in my nature, at least in this stage of my life, to have set views on things. Rather, I try to assess things and reassess them according to new information that comes my way. It's not in my nature to jump on bandwagons or attach myself to particular pundits and go with everything they say. And of late, I've become particularly averse to angry views that are based on a particular ideology and uh, not always uh, fact-based, in fact, very rarely, especially in comment sections. I have never in my whole life accepted a top-down official viewpoint on things, uh, especially when that uh, comes uh, without any real evidence that stands up to scrutiny, um, and never more so than today. In this particular incident, I have I accepted a lot of the early information that we had about this novel coronavirus from the onset. As soon as I heard the evidence from Francis Boyle and others, I have accepted pretty much that this was a dangerous bioweapon that came out of Wuhan, China whether by design or more probably uh, accidentally. However, when this spread to Europe and then the United States, I expected that the consequences would be devastating as they have been indeed to the economy and to the whole fabric of life. However, as bad as it has been for those affected in hospitals and nursing homes, uh, the numbers of deaths have not come anywhere close to what I had expected, let alone to the projections of the likes of Neil Ferguson of Imperial College and Tony Fauci. When I was in lockdown with my partner Pam for four weeks, well actually six weeks, uh, we watched a nine-part series um, on vaccination that was very, very good. And it took me back to some of my roots because um, I, tr I, I worked for 10 years as an acupuncturist and it made me reconsider some of this early information in the regards, in, in, in the light of this new information. So since then, I've heard information from Dr. Rashid Buttar and Judy Mikovits, Mikovits that has persuaded me that it's not so much a plague as a pandemic of corruption. At the very least, it's not what we're being told. However, um, none of this is set in stone, and I'm open to persuasion, especially by events, unfolding events, as, uh, as they may unfold in the coming months or even years. I've been going through my archives fairly laboriously, as best I can, and I intend to set out uh, how this has evolved since January, which is when I first learnt about the novel coronavirus, although I know that the history goes back uh, further than that. Much of this uh, material relates to New Zealand. Um, so I'm juxtaposing that with the statements of the, uh, the World Health Organization and the changing uh, party line there. Uh, and partially, uh, this is because uh, this is where I live. And secondly, because New Zealand has been held up to the world as some sort of example to be followed. 
So join me as we take a brief look at the history of the last three months and why I have come to the conclusion that this is more of a plague of corruption or even what has been described uh, recently uh, as a pandemic rather than a true pandemic. Okay, um, so I just want to start. Uh, I want to start with January and February, first of all. So this is uh, from the 14th of February. This is before I learned about the coronavirus. So this is uh, from the World Health Organization on the 14th of January. Preliminary investigations conducted by the Chinese authorities have found no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transmission of the novel coronavirus identified in Wuhan, China. And then this was the first I heard about it. This was from uh, Hal Turner, uh, Trapped. China locks down a city of Wuhan over virus, police blocking all roads in and out. And a few can remember back to then uh, allowed time, uh, presumably, for five million Chinese to uh, leave Wuhan and to spread this around China and presumably around the world. At this stage, uh, Turner was uh, saying his, um, his sources were saying that millions of people would die from this in China. Okay, and then uh, this is uh, uh, the 27th of January. Some of these might be a wee bit out of, uh, out of sync. It's been a really hard job putting this together. So this is from New Zealand, uh, coronavirus outbreak. Chinese tourists on the same flight as person with deadly illness arrive in New Zealand. A group of Chinese tourists who were on the same flight as a person with the deadly coronavirus have arrived in New Zealand. And then this was uh, from Hal Turner, but he's quoting uh, scientific literature. He's not coming out with it. He said a medical study of the virus outbreak, 83% infection rate and 15% mortality. Get right with God. And then at the end of January, uh, um, Great Game India came out with this coronavirus bioweapon, how China stole coronavirus from Canada and weaponized it. Last year, a mysterious shipment was caught smuggling coronavirus from Canada. It was traced to Chinese agents working at a Canadian lab. Subsequent investigation by Great Game India linked the agents to the Chinese biological warfare program from where the virus is suspected to have leaked causing the uh, Wuhan uh, coronavirus outbreak. And uh, <laughs> this, this was the, uh, the thing uh, that got uh, Zero Hedge kicked off permanently from Twitter. It was uh, from BuzzFeed. A pro-Trump blog doxed a Chinese scientist. It falsely accused of creating the coronavirus as a bioweapon. The scientist's name, photo, email, and the telephone number are being spread across American social media. And here we are um, on February the 1st, Zero Hedge permanently suspended from Twitter for harassment. And this is the, uh, an article from the 2nd of January, uh, sorry, uh, 1st of February. Uh, coronavirus contains HIV insertion, stoking fears over artificially created bioweapons. And of course, there were, about this time, uh, the information came out about the HIV uh, inserts into the gen genetic material. And this uh, came out, and this almost as soon as it came out, the paper was retracted. And then we have this, so we must never forget this. The WHO chief, Dr. Tedros, says widespread travel bans are not needed to beat the, uh, the China virus. Uh, noticing, notice that previously they were saying uh, 
There's no human to human transmission. That was back in January. So here, the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros, said on Monday, there was no need for measures that unnecessarily interfere with international travel and trade in trying to halt the spread of a coronavirus that has killed 361 people in China. So just put that into your memory and don't forget it. And then about this time, uh, this is the 3rd of February, this is when we first heard from Dr. Francis Boyle. Dr. Francis Boyle, creator of Bioweapons Act, says coronavirus is a biological warfare weapon. In an explosive interview, Dr. Francis Boyle, who drafted the Biological Weapons Act, has given a detailed statement admitting that the 2019 coronavirus is an effective biological warfare weapon and that the wealth World Health Organization already knows about it. And then uh, uh, going back to the World Health Organization, uh, they're sort of gradually changing their narrative and they say, uh, having uh, denied the whole thing, they said a window of opportunity to act, World Health Organization says. And then um, this is about the same time, I haven't got the date with me, but uh, we're basically at a pandemic now, Mayo Clinic physician on coronavirus. So this is the first talk about a pandemic and it was some, you know, days or weeks before the, uh, before the WHO uh, acted. Um, and then, yeah, at about this time, we started to hear True News has been doing some very good coverage. Coronavirus, thousands more cruise passengers might have been exposed to deadly infection. And then uh, on the 10th of February, coronavirus cases spreading outside China could be the spark that becomes bigger fire, WHO says. Uh, WHO officials are now concerned about new coronavirus cases in France and the UK that were transmitted without any travel history to China. The detection of a small number of cases could be the spark that becomes the bigger fire, but for now it's only a spark. So in other words, it's got nothing to do with China. And then at this time, uh, an advanced team of WHO experts arrives in China to probe the, uh, the coronavirus, says Dr. Tedros. Um, and this was a red letter day, so fix this in your, in, in your thing, because I think this is the, uh, oh no, sorry, it's not, this is, no, this is just calling it by a different name. The World Health Organization names the new coronavirus COVID-19. It stands for Corona, CO stands for Corona, the, the VI for virus and the D for D disease. WHO officials wanted a name that doesn't refer to a geographical location, animals, an individual, or a group of people. In other words, they wanted to uh, defend their Chinese friends. And uh, this is the first kind of sign of action from the New Zealand government. Flights from China, oh, sorry, uh, still landing in New Zealand despite coronavirus travel van. Flights from mainland China are continuing to land at New Zealand airports on the day a ban on all foreign travellers arriving from the country goes into effect. The, uh, uh, the government announced the travel ban on Sunday as part of a fight against the deadly coronavirus outbreak, which has killed over 300 people in China. Air New Zealand has suspended all flights between Shanghai and Auckland, but three China-based airlines are continuing to fly into New Zealand. And uh, this was the first mention of uh, um, broken supply chains. I wrote an article here, empty sh shelves, coronavirus shortages could hit stores by April, this was an article by myself. And 
yeah, I'm not quite sure what this is all about. Uh, well, I know what it's about. And then uh, towards the end of February, the first mention of Iran. Iran shuts schools, cultural centers as coronavirus kills six. Coronavirus is in Iran cut for the most in any chi country outside China. And uh, this is an article I did um, about stuff that was happening. At this stage, what I was seeing is just that the authorities in New Zealand were just letting the virus in on cruise liners, on planes. Uh, so this is, I'll just read the first few paragraphs. Yesterday, I, I did very little, but uh, did a spa with a woman from Auckland, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, when I pushed her further, she said she has a son working for the Auckland Hospital Board who has been attending meetings on this. Given the strictness around patient confidentiality, I wonder how acceptable it is for a health worker to be sharing what is said in the boardroom to one's mother. I've said on numerous occasions that it looks less and less like we're living in a democratic country, and I've had some experience with the Soviet Union. I know when people no longer trust their government or media, they resort to two things, reading between the lines and rumours. Is that where we are in um, New Zealand in 2020? So that's, I was already saying this back in February. And yeah, we just had various things. Uh, witness shocked after watching St. John's staff in hazmat suits help three people into an ambulance. And of course, this wasn't, this was reported, but officially uh, it had nothing to do with COVID-19. So I was getting very, very alarmed at this time that the official figures were just uh, lies and they weren't taking into account community trans transmission. So five, and this is what they said was fake news. Um, Five New Zealanders and one Chinese have uh, ch tested positive for coronavirus in Wellington, New Zealand. Authorities have said in a statement, this marked the first confirmed coronavirus cases in New Zealand. According to the statement, five people became ill and um, coming into a contact with a Chinese colleague who was visiting, visiting from Shanghai and had recently been in Wuhan, the epicenter of the outbreak. Uh, now, of course, this was immediately uh, um, kind of denounced as, as fake news. And this was the first mention um, of the economy. This is uh, from the end of February. New Zealand economy uh, faces, uh, you know, yeah, I can't see what I'm, what I'm reading. Uh, Impact, economic impact from coronavirus outbreak. Finance Minister Grant Robinson warns of short-term hit as disruption to tourism, logging and agriculture grows. Ha, ha, ha. And then this was a red letter day because um, up till then, uh, you know, it was all kind of, we don't have any cases in New Zealand and uh, we don't need to worry about this. So on the 28th of February, New Zealand confirms case of COVID-19 coronavirus. The person who has been confirmed to have New Zealand's first case of COVID-19 followed all the steps you would hope would be followed. And that was actually uh, an Iranian chap who just came back from Iran who did all the right things, as opposed to some of the other people who followed. Uh, so here we are again, yeah, the first case of COVID-19, coronavirus. Uh, and on the same day, um, coronavirus, global stock markets suffer six day of losses. New Zealand share market opened lower on Friday uh, following six day of world market losses as, um, as investors uh, respond to the economic threat of coronavirus and of course since then the the, uh, uh, the uh, stock market is kind of you know up and up and down and they uh, they don't even seem to mind all the all the, all the bad news you know you know say about food shortages and everything else that uh, doesn't seem to 
have any effect on uh, what's happening on Wall Street. Ah, now this was, uh, sorry, this is going back to what I showed you before. Without foundation, warning after fake news article says six corona cases in Wellington. Well, um, we'll never really know whether that was true or not. We just have to believe the authorities, don't we? And then uh, at the end of February, coronavirus queues at supermarkets as panic buying ramps up. Uh, and of course, the first thing to go was toilet paper and then, and then flour um, and a lot of other things because of disruption to the uh, supply chains. But of course, they just uh, pointed to it as, 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 as panic buying. It was nothing to do with uh, supply chain problems or, 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 um, or crop failures or, or, or anything else. And um, New Zealand moving into next phase with the first po positive COVID-19 coronavirus. Uh, so they're going into uh, a new sort of strategy, which was to destroy the virus. And uh, yeah, so that's it. So uh, there's a lot of information there. Uh, it's taken uh, longer than I thought. So I'm going to spread this over uh, two videos and have the uh, information or the timeline for um, uh, March, April and the first part of May uh, in a separate video. So I hope you'll go to that and then at some stage I'll be making my own kind of summation and doing some of my own uh, um, analysis um, in a, in a form of video, but that might be several days. So anyway, uh, please go to the second video now.